where, where we, we left, left off last time. Tikaros and Ptolemaeus were investigating in the deep ravines of Ravenwood and uncovered a temple of, well, a Medusa in it, apparently, and uh, decided, no, 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 let's leave. And, but, but I do think your ears perked up slightly when she said, when uh, Tikaros read her mind and got the thoughts, you cannot have the staff. I think, I think that, that might have gotten, gotten some attention. We'll have to find out in just a bit. On the other side of Ravenswood, because, you know, why not split the party? Uh, Herax uh, got some tea from someone, and it's probably not poisoned. You know, they've, she's made an, a statement of that several times. Uh, Adrastos, however, is outside uh, playing with one of the many pets that live in Ravenswood, a, a basilisk. Um, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll have, have to see, see where, where that, that comes, comes up to, because um, Hyrax's uh, host, host suggested that he bring his friends, although he's going to have to limit it a bit because she doesn't have enough teacups for everyone, so she suggested he could kill one of you and then bring the rest, so we'll have to see where that one goes. But setting the way back machine, they were in the Temple of Elements, solving a puzzle for Farika when a skeleton hurled a stone and hit Vara in the head, which rendered her unconscious. She has been carted along and dragged with the group ever since, unconscious between multiple adventures, but she finds herself now groggily opening her eyes. Night has fallen. And the, the only, only thing that she can see is the moonlight glinting off of Prime's face as he sits over her, scanning the distance. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, pri Prime? Oh, you're, you're awake. awake. We, we were a bit concerned. concerned. Do, Do you, you often, often sleep for this long? long? You, you sleep, sleep almost, almost as much as Ptolemy. Oh, um... I don't have an accurate answer for you because I don't know how long I've been asleep. Um, it's, it's been, been about, about three days. days. That's uh, that's a bit abnormal for me. Yes, I would say. What what happened? Where where are we? Where is everyone else? And Vara immediately kind of sits up and is alert and trying to find everyone else. You, you notice, notice the smell on the air of burnt wood, not, not like, like a small campfire, campfire but large volumes of burnt wood. wood. And, and also, also burnt flesh. Ooh. Um, well, well, our, our friend, friend Orcos, Orcos appeared, um, bade, bade us all go with him. him. Um, we, we stopped, stopped outside, outside the walls of Krimnos, which apparently has been burned to the ground. ground. Well, for, for the, the most part. Uh, there, there was, was also mentions of a plague. plague. Um, everyone, everyone else went, went to investigate, investigate and... I have, I have not, not seen, seen them since. How, when was that? How long have they been gone? Uh, about, about six, six hours, hours, I would say. say. Maybe. Maybe. Somewhere yeah. in that range. Goodness. Okay. Um, well, great. Thank you for looking after me. Um, which which direction did they go? Am uh, I, am I could... fit for travel? <laughs> <Did you kinda, laughs> what? I got hit with something? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so we mended it on your head. You have, have the most, most interesting blood, by the way. But, but anyway, um, yeah, yes. yes. Uh, you, you seem to be fine. We couldn't find anything wrong with you. We figured you just needed time to mend, or maybe you were communing with the spirits. Hmm. Hmm. But either way, um, I believe if you swallow, swallow, follow the smell of the burnt wood and the road into Krimnos, uh, that is the direction they went. Oh. Um, I, I will warn, warn you, you, however, that, that when they stopped, stopped outside uh, a little, little ways away, that, that there was an arrow fired at them, uh, but, but it did not seem to be aimed at them. It was more of a warning. They, they of course, course, proceeded anyway. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, I wasn't really communicating with um, spirits or anything. I, 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 um, I usually see the stars when I sleep. But they uh, they looked different than usual. And Vara will pull out her um, star chart that she keeps and kind of stare at it um, for a moment. And the 
the stars don't seem to quite be in the position that she remembers. And I will use Cosmic Omen for the first time. Woo! I'm gonna roll a die. Da -da -da. It says roll a die. Does it? It doesn't matter. It's uh, just an even or an odd. So I guess yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. really matter what it is. Flip, Flip a coin if you wish. But... Cool. Let's do a d6. It was even. Great. Someone, Someone is, is saying, saying that I am echoing, echoing and I am not You're sure doubled. Why. Yeah, you're doubled on on your side, on the uh, stream side. How in the world am I doubled on the stream side? Let's try that. Does that change it at all? Yeah, that one fixed it. I feel like an better yeah, yeah, that or worse. <laughs> better or worse. Do you prefer number one or number two? <laughs> Thank I, I, you yeah, for letting us know. Uh, something had to go wrong, and that was it. So good. Thanks, maybe the rest of it will be okay. Cool. All right. So you have done your cosmic omen. And what did you get? I'm sorry. I was so distracted by my echoing voice that I couldn't hear. You're good. It was an even, so it's wheel. All right. Excellent. As you look at your star chart and you see these things that you notice that while the constellations aren't the same as when you went to sleep, obviously, uh, that things have shifted a little bit, you do still notice something unusual on the outer parts of your star chart compared to the actual sky. You're not familiar with these markings. It's almost like there's a, a new set of stars that you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you um do you recognize this? I, I've I've never seen a constellation like this before, and and she'll kind of show him her star map. No, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, huh. it, um, and he takes it and he rotates it a little bit and takes out a mirror and sets it beside it, and it almost looks like a reflection. Of these stars. Huh. But not a direct reflection. It's like you would see them if you were standing somewhere else. Hmm. Interesting. Um, a, a, a sign from the gods, hopefully. It feels, feels positive, I'm hoping. Um, well, good. Hopefully this is a, a, a good sign. Um, you said, sorry, follow the burnt flesh smell? Is that what I'm doing? That, that would be my suggestion. Right. Uh, I can do that. And um, Vara will go ahead and wild shape into a war horse uh, oh, nice. to make faster travel. All right. As you hurry your way down the road, um, as you approach, you can see, yes, Krimnos, uh, much of it is burned. The walls still stand, but the gates are gone. There are some markings on the outside of it. Um, they only seem familiar to you because of your time with um, Agrios. And uh, you've probably seen a little bit of them because you had some experience with some Minotaurs earlier. <laughs> so you recognize their, their markings of, of Minotaur raid parties. But much of Krimnos is still on fire, that that stands. And are you going to make your way into the town? Oh, it's a, it's a lot of burning flesh. And <laughs> she, she just kind of like whinnies and shakes her head angrily. And yeah, she'll, she'll head into town. All right. As you make your way into town, uh, at first, some, you start hearing people say, no, go, go. And then someone, it's, it's a horse. Will, will this hurt a horse? All the other horses, the raiders took them, so is this one of ours that came back? And people will approach you, and you notice that they are covered and masked, and their hands and arms are wrapped. Ooh. And their Great. bandages do not look good. Whatever they're covering has begun to seep through the bandages. Okay, I remember uh, <laughs> that a plague was mentioned, and I... Um... Well, now I'll kind of stamp my feet and rear up a little bit and not let them touch me. Uh, 
and then I'll uh, try to continue forward. Okay, and where are you intending to go? You'll make it to town center, which is where you find a few small hovels that have been set up. And interestingly, they're outside of Farika's temple, which is the only temple still standing. Hmm. I think I'll poke my head in Farika's temple if possible. All right. No one will get in your way. <laughs> no one gets in your way as you head up there. Uh, you make it to the front opening of the temple. And of course, there's all these ornate drawings of Farika in various forms. And the wall, the outer wall has a, a tapestry of the tests and trials of Farika, listing some of the more famous trials that she is put people through. Very artsy type of thing. No sign Ins of... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No sign was of... Say, was there any sign of um, any of my lovely party members having been here? No. Uh, no. Addressed us. Uh, Z let us know that uh, Tully and I are currently disguised as each other. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay, that's two. Now one more, and I'm just going to give up and go home. Wait a minute, I am home. That's not going to work. Let me see if I can get this to behave here. Excuse me one moment as I, you know, play cameraman too. How did I do that? How did I possibly get you guys mixed up? Thank you for letting us know.
Okay, try and just one again. Try it again. I am hearing myself now in echo. Okay, now it says they can hear me. And would you guys say something on your side, please, Vara? Somebody? Something? Help me, please? No, I heard you. So oh. I won't say anything. No. Hello? I'm just waiting for them to say yes, they can hear. All right, All right great. All right. Uh, thank you, OBS, for making my evening complete. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Uh, well, at least I didn't have to kill the stream and restart, so that's good. So, all right, where were we? Oh, oh yes, you Vara were is trying survival. to find her people, and oh. I rolled a twenty-four on survival. She tracked my friends. All right, uh, as you are looking around, it's hard to find exactly what you're looking for because there is a thin layer of soot that covers everything. But oh. as you might imagine, there will be some tracks through this, but. There's continually ash falling from the burning that's going on. And there's something about this, this ash that lies on the ground that if you brush it aside, it almost seems like it tries to make its way back together. Huh. Don't like that. But you are able to see where apparently two different groups of people came together and headed off what a side gate from the city that uh, looks like it heads into a woods. I will head that direction. All right. The people are kind of, you know, what, what, what's with the horse? What do we need to keep the horse? We're out of food. Oh, no, thank you. I will, <laughs> I will trot a little faster. <laughs> it went to a little canter, huh? But. No one pursues you as you make your way along. And as you continue into this forest, it's kind of green. It's nice. And then it begins to widen out. There's a bit of a valley and a ravine that goes in. And the tracks you're following go in there. And eventually you come upon a body that is lying in the middle of the trail face down. Hmm. It's covered in a robe. Uh, but you can see that its hands are bandaged. Ooh, okay. I won't touch it. Um, can, I, can I sniff at it to try to get a scent of uh, someone, see who killed him? As That's I assume it was one of my lovely friends. <laughs> you will have to do some form of an investigation, which means getting somewhat yeah. close to it to do that. That's okay. As long as I don't touch it. That's her biggest concern. She'll just kind of sniff. Right, a give waft. Me, give me an investigation check. Okay. So 15. Right. You move in and you begin to sniff around this. And as you do, you get this, this odor of meat that had been left in something liquid too long. Kind of that slow, putrefying, rot smell. And just by moving in close to it and your breath against it, it begins to like ooze out of the bandages. Ugh. Just this dark, viscous fluid. Cool. Yeah, I'll step away from it and kind of nay angrily. <laughs> um, well, let's see. I'll just keep, is there like an obvious path? That I'm on. There is definitely a way in, and there are footprints marks going that way. Okay, I'll keep heading that way. All right. As you're traipsing through, give me a survival check. I shall. Uh, so twenty-two. You come up on some markings on trees. Um, hard to tell exactly what they mean, but they're obviously some kind of a trail marking. Okay. As you pursue these, this. as you pursue these in a ways, you find yourself in this almost maze of different ravines 
they're made out of rock and the roots of trees. And there are several places where the roots make like bridges going across the ravine. And you come to one of these and there's a marking that points up. I'll look up. <laughs> uh, there is a way to climb up. Drat. My horse form. Um, okay. I Can I climb drop. it as a horse? Nay. Nay. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and... Um, I had to get I'll a bed. Lose the, in. I'll lose the horse and I'll, uh, I'll start climbing. All right. Uh, you make your way to the top and um, to, make, to shorten things so we can get the group back together, uh, you are able to follow the trail until uh, it comes to this area here. Give me just a moment. I can get you back on the right path with everybody else. Yeah. Did it actually change them? I see a change. Yeah, I just noticed it's not showing the map on the screen. There we go. Okay. Excellent. So uh, you would actually be appearing in this zone right around here, Vara. Cool. And you see a I'm very not... large stone structure. Okay, cool. I'm not too concerned about drawing attention to myself. Um since it's been fairly quiet all the way here. So I'll just kind of be yelling out as I approach just different names of the party members. Okay. Uh, I think you're close enough and Ptolemaeus, you and uh, Picaros had left the temple last time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would say you can definitely hear Vara's voice calling out to you. Uh, yeah, I'll follow that sound. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kind of Beckon Tikros behind me and, and to, to follow me and then I'll just kind of go through this kind of uh, these routes up, up here to come out of the clearing and hopefully see Vara from here. All right, Vara, you will be able to see them at this point. If you're on top of this plateau, so you can see where they're at. Oh, real quick, speaking yes. of being on top of this plateau, um, the opening was technically on top on the top part right not the ravine bottom part yeah yes it's okay at the top. so okay so 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 yeah we're, we're also at the top here then uh yeah i'll i'll approach and just walk up as close as i can at that point i'll just be like Vara, um how are you how are you feeling how's your head oh um i'm quite all right uh far far more concerned about you all uh Oh, Adrastos and um, Hyrax? They went around the other way, across. It's been, what, 30 minutes, 40 minutes or so? No, it's been heaps longer than that, Tolly. And I think we need to go after them right now. Hmm. What, what exactly are we dealing with? I saw there's well, a plague. That's the thing. Tikros and Walt. Hyrax, at least, thinks that 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 plague has followed him, and we're here in the forest to see if there is a cure or something, some way to help. Hmm. And we were supposed to be looking out for the eye, and although Tikros and I have found something that could potentially be the eye, there's an entrance to the temple on the backside there that leads to a Medusa. Huh. But hmm. the Hyrax went the other way, and Adrastod followed after. And I believe Tikros is right. It's been 30 minutes since Adrastos went after him. So. Yes, I, I think a regroup would be a good idea. Um, all right. And, and so this plague we're thinking is originating from that um, thing that we encountered? They've described it pretty pretty well. Um, a, an orb with a fingerprint on it. Oh. I don't mention anything about colors, but it came in some sort of smoke, just like the ones that you've encountered. 
Mm. And those that have been inflict- afflicted by the plague, their flesh seems to have been melting off. Ugh, not good. Um, yes, and, and the cure is this eye, you said? We don't know, In theory. actually. In theory. Okay. Although, Tigros, you told me that the Medusa is keeping a staff safe, right? Yeah, I peeked into her mind a little bit, and she said, they can't have the staff. So that sounds kind of important to me. Especially for the, for, for one that's devout to Farika as well. All Something right. to think about, but regrouping is probably the best idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, great. The which direction did you say? They followed this wall. Fo- let, let's yeah, follow me. And uh, I guess they followed un- under the ravine, right? Like in in the ravine. That's... No, they followed along the top. They were along the top. Along right. the top. Yeah. Then then I'll I'll also kind of trace the the wall and follow along on the top. Then. All right. Well, while you guys are making your way over there. I'm going to jump back to Adrastos. Adrastos, you were uh, getting yourself prepped to charge forward across the trail when last we met. I was not still... charging. I was going to throw a javelin because the bridge between <laughs> us is out. There we go. All right. Javelin away. Okay. Um, Because I have disadvantage because I'm not looking at it. I'm going to kick a rock at the ground to distract the basilisk to give myself fainting attack, give myself advantage, and get rid of the disadvantage. <laughs> All right. Excellent. excellent. Um, if that's okay with you. Oh, that is excellent. I love it. All righty. Frankenstein, you get to be the d20 for my first attack. Uh, oh, oh, buddy. Uh, 26. All right. That is, that is, believe it or not, a hit. I know that's... I, I don't believe you. Double check. Um, okay. Then... That is a lot of damage. 26. Two hits. And... Oh, or I could slow, roll really low. So that's eight damage. All right. And what type of damage is that? It's a javelin, you said? Piercing, yes. Yes, excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I have thrown one of my... How many do I have? Uh, four javelins, so I have three left, so I'll throw another one. Okay. Yeah, this one will have disadvantage, though, because I don't have advantage on all of them. I missed. But I did not miss with a one. <laughs> all right. Well, the basculus has already showed it is somewhat uh, apprehensive to cross this as the limbs broke underneath it when it moved forward. So it's just going to kind of pace back and forth, growling at you. So, uh, Hyrax, uh, is there anything you would like to do? Hyrax probably hears this battle going on outside. Um, <clears throat> and uh, currently getting nowhere with the... Uh, kindly old woman. Kindly old woman. Um, but I didn't want to call her anything offensive. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and realizing that this is not her pet during the course of their conversation, he... Uh, endeavors to run outside and help his friend uh and he says please excuse me and rushes down the stairs uh, i believe yeah i should be able to get oops go whoops i don't know click that right here uh and i think i can see it from there uh i would say so yes all right there's no trees in the way I just barely round the corner, and uh, what he's going to do is 
I'm going to take a long shot here and do a sharpshooter throw with a dart as he reaches to a quiver at his belt, draws one out, and carefully throws one. Okay. While it's focused on Adrastos. So that's going to be minus five, so ultimately it's a plus one. i put my glasses on so I can actually see my dice. First throw going to miss. All right. Uh, oh, and before I forget, bonus action. Let's see how far away from it you can use it. Yeah, bonus action, hunter's mark on it, uh, just in okay. case I do hit. All right. First one misses, so he grabs another one, aims more carefully, and throws again with a shooter shot. And that's going to be a 17 to hit. That is a hit. Aha. So that should be... Um, where's, my, where's my little D4? Where has she gone? There she is. That is... 4 plus 4 plus 10 plus... Three. Uh, so that is going to be um, 21 piercing damage with that hit. All right. The javelin goes deep inside. Yeah, goes deep inside the creature and it just lets out this screeching yell as blood pours from its body and it just howls for just ah, ah, over and over. And then you begin to hear answers coming from the woods, not too close, but not too far away. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Not all the answers are of a similar voice, but they are definitely responding. Okay, uh, they're not of a similar voice. Okay, so Tam, let me ask you this. My favorite enemy, need to remind you, is monstrosities. Monstrosities, that is correct. Can I identify some of the calls that are responding? Absolutely. There is definitely at least one more basilisk. Uh, it sounds a bit far away, however. Hmm. The one that concerns you the most, though, is the, the almost... Uh, <clears throat> A uh, growling owl sound. Okay, yep, that'll be the owl bear. That and... one is coming from fairly nearby. And are there there are only two responding calls? Or there are, are there... other calls out there, but you don't recognize them as the, well as you do those two specifically. Okay, and do the other do the others aside from those two sound? nearby enough that I think they would reach us before Adrastos can get inside. They not being able to judge the creature as well, you may not know from your senses as how far away they are, but I would say you've probably got a couple maybe a minute or two before something is going to be there. Adrastos, we don't have long. You need to get inside as quickly as possible. I will nod from behind my shield and look for and, a path inside. And that is the end of my turn. All right. Uh, your direct path would be to proceed forward past the basilisk around the bend and go across the bridge of roots. Uh, however, you could go back the way you came and attempt to scale the stone wall that surrounds the other side. That's kind of the part of the building, but... While it does have tree roots and stuff growing out of it, it is not necessarily a navigable route. Also, if you have, I have climbing skills, it would probably be a little easier without... You know, a monk would just run down the side of it, of course. But in your condition, uh, being uh, slightly uh, limited on your handiness, it might be difficult. You might find yourself at a disadvantage trying to uh, navigate that. Hmm.
Okay. Um. All right, I'm going to big risk here. I'm going to roar out out of my way and use daunting roar and just try to make myself look big to make the basilisk run so I can get past it. All right. The very wounded basilisk with two weapons piercing its skin and hanging out of it backs away and leaves a trail, a very hefty trail of blood as it makes its way into the underbrush. You can still hear it making noises, growling a bit, but the growling's mixed with a bit of that, kind of like a, a an angry dog would uh, whimper a bit while it growled, <laughs> kind of stay yeah. away, but ow, I hurt, type of noises. Okay, and with that, I'm going to, because that was a bonus action, I'm going to dash. Okay. So this is out, right? The bridge? Portions of it are broken. You could still make it across. You're probably a little bit more adept than the basilisk would be at crossing. Okay, then I will do that. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. <laughs> I will hoof it, or I suppose paw it. All right. I want to find out what you guys are going to do, then I'll go back to the other group who will be getting around the building, but they've still got a little ways to go. Uh, as soon as Adrastos is there, I tend to turn around and run inside. Okay. Which I will do. All right. The two of you make your way inside the house, up the stairs. And you see the old woman standing by the counter where she had gotten the tea from before, and she turns around and looks at you and says, Well, wait, you, you didn't kill both of them, did you? I said only one. I've got four teacups. No, I have not killed any of my allies. And I have three others. Well, then you don't follow directions very well at all, do you? Not very bright. Are you the smart one? She looks at Adrastus. Not even a little bit. They only send me the... Yes, I know! I'm not going to poison the tea. We she seems wait. delightful, Hyrax. Yes, that is one word. Oh yeah, there is no hiding the <laughs> disdain and address this his voice when he says that. There are three other friends we are waiting on, as I said. They are in a separate group. It's terrible. This is a terrible thing. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't have enough cups. When we do this, we don't have enough cups. I don't think they will mind if one of them doesn't drink tea. She turns and just gives you this very angry look. I have to be a proper host! If it is that important, then when they come in, I will volunteer to wait outside. Well, Borky, that, that just won't do. Why not? Because I'm supposed to talk to all of you, your entire group. But they didn't provide enough teacups. Is there any way that you can get another teacup? No. No! I really can't think of any way to come up with another teacup at this point. You are guests in my home. Maybe I should put up a sign, bring your own teacups. 
That would be appropriate. Yes. No, I am not going to break out the fine china. Not for this. The fine what? Don't bother the DM. He will get angry at you and bad things will happen. Rocks will fall from the sky. <laughs> yes, I, I realized as I said it, I should have picked another line, but anyway. <laughs> it's what's in my brain. By the way, Happy New Year's, because uh, it is Chinese New Year's. See, that's the whole thing. It was all a lead-in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Makes sense, sounds likely. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, I suppose if I must. Go outside. Gather some mud, maybe some tree pieces. If you could get some sap from a tree, that would be good. Is there another exit? I'm afraid that one isn't safe anymore. You've made my home unsafe? Your home was unsafe when I got here. Well, I've never had a problem whatsoever. Do you leave your home often? What well, business is of yours? You're getting a little nosy, aren't you? I apologize for my rudeness. Hmm. Are you shedding? Looking at Adrastos. I don't believe so. I distinctly see little tufts of fur. I would really like to know if there was another exit or entrance to this place. I don't see how that's appropriate for me to give you information about the makeup of my home. I still haven't determined if you're thieves. What can I do to convince you that I'm not? Don't steal anything. Done. Well, we'll see. You haven't left yet, and I haven't taken an inventory. I would like another exit so that I may gather the resources you need for another teacup. Well, I'm afraid, no. There is only one way in and out of my home. Mm. Adrastos, I regret to say it, but we may need to face that owl bear and or that that that, that owl bear combination creature and whatever else answered that call. Otherwise our friends will have to. Well, far be it for me to turn down a challenge. Right. Well, speaking of your friends, let's jump back to where they are at the moment. Meanwhile, at the Hall of <laughs> Justice. As you make your way around this building, which is still at the, the side of you as you're skirting and going across these different little mesas connected by the roots, it begins to change from that carved stone into more just a rocky stone wall. Still shaped cylindrically. You know, it's a very large, round building, but less of... more natural looking less carved and, and made uh but still very distinguished from the rest of the surrounding area and you suddenly hear this outcry it starts with the wail of what sounds like a a, a tortured animal of some sort and then other creatures begin to answer that there are hisses and howls growls and this is ahead of us? Uh, all around you. Something tells me something happened up there. And we're going to get caught in the brunt of it if we don't hurry up. Let's speed up the pace. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to start kind of making a little bit more of a brisk pace as okay. we follow along the wall. Okay. What's your general marching order as you do this? Because some of the trails are going to be narrow enough you can't go too abreast. 
I think I'll be going first. Okay. I think Mara yeah. would be in the back. Um, yeah, still trying to get her footing. Okay. Been asleep think, for a few days. <laughs> I think Tikaros would, she would try and stealth at this point. She would try and disappear, but keep a view of her two companions ahead and behind. Okay. All right, so go ahead and roll me a stealth check. Okay. That's good. 22. All right. <laughs> All right. You make your way along and traipse in across various points of the trail when you hear something moving on the mesa in front of you. So you haven't quite crossed into that, but you, you hear something across the way. And then this head just kind of pokes out. You can only see the back of it, but it's covered in feathers. It's kind of like sniffing around like an, an animal, a, a small bear, maybe? Or some kind of a predatory animal sniffing around at it and then it turns its head in your direction let opens its beak and lets out a a howl that's a cross between that of an owl and, and a large bear kind of a weird noise as it screeches at you and then stands up to its full height, and it is a very large creature. I don't know if any of you will have ever seen one before. Probably not. Certainly not. I don't think so. Essentially, <laughs> like a bear, large claws with the head of an owl and covered in feathers. Its colorings seem a little out of place in the woods that you're in because you know, animals tend to take on some colors of and blend a bit with the area around them its feathers are more purplish colored with bright purple streaks oh huh. well, you're not from around here are you it is going to tell. raise its arms and begin to lumber towards you. And when it comes to the edge of the ravine where the roots are, it stops at the edge of that and just kind of... Rawr! It reaches a pretty good distance across that ravine. It has a very, very long reach, but you're out of its stretch at the moment. So it's not crossing the ravine in that sense. Not at the moment. Something tells me that Hyrax and Adrastus aren't too far away ahead, uh, ahead of us now. But with this creature here, I'll back up a little bit, uh, a little bit to, to kind of widen the gap. How do you guys, how do you propose we do this? We'll either have to go another route or face this challenge ourselves. Is it hungry or is it territorial? Or is it just regularly vicious? Um, Vara will kind of step a little bit closer and try to get a, Try to get a feel of what it's attempting to do as a predator. Is it is it being territorial? Is it just hungry? Give me a survival check. And you can do advantage because of your nature. Nice. Cool. So 15. All right. Uh, definitely there's something. It's more than just a food type of thing. It's more of a protective <clears throat> Type of aggressive mm. thing and it's more just from the the fact that it hasn't charged or anything else it's more trying to make you warned off maybe can i make a perception check to see if there's anything worth 
mentioning like behind it like i'm kind of like looking around to see if i can see anything behind it and i won't even make you roll for it there's a lot of trees so it's going to be a little difficult to see past where it's come out of on top of the mesa most of these mesas they have a bear area and then there's some thick they have an owlbear area too and they have thick trees and bramble around it um so it would be hard to see anything past that so there won't be anything particular standing out to you that it might be guarding from what you can see at the moment okay is there a different path uh, around it that i can take that follows the, the there ball? are lots of paths but following to go where it looks like others have gone specifically a drastos because he would have left a bigger trail probably um this is the way that he went and anything else would take you away from this building and as soon as that happens if you lose sight of it you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere and trying to find your way through a very thickly dense wood so it's a good marker point if you move away from it that'll be your choice but you might not find your path at that point. Uh, let's see. I would like to try something here. Um, Is it possible for me to kind of tap into some some extra planar powers that I uh very recently uh mm -hmm. received? And first of all combine it with my uh, unsettling words, Bardic Inspiration, as I'm kind of whispering once again, uh in multiple languages at the same time towards the the owl bear and i will cast cause fear okay um and try to get it away from the area uh so it'll be a a wisdom saving throw of 15 but it will be made uh with uh, also you have to roll a d8 and subtract that to the to the total That is going to be a 14. It is uh, frightened. All right. It... Um, and it is a concentration spell up to one minute as I'm trying to uh, get it to uh, leave my area. I guess it All can right. repeat the saving throw after every six seconds. But Okay. I'm it's going to kind of shake its head a moment and just, you know, and again, lash out and then hit the roots you know kind of leaving some claw marks and stuff on the ground and it's gonna scuff a little bit and then turn and walk back towards the wood and it gets to the edge of it it's gonna look back over its shoulder and growl again at you and then move off into the wood line i'm gonna continue forward okay Staring kind of very intently towards that wood line as I as I continue past, and I'll I'll try to be like as wary of it as possible, I guess, and and not uh make too much noise around the area. Okay. See if there's any other creatures and whatnot. As you make your way across, unfortunately, the way the the ravine and the roots go, it's gonna be close to the wood line but there's immediately another set a bridge to go across on the other side as you make your way and you touch the soil on the other side it kind of charges out a little bit and growls at you but it doesn't come any further than that okay uh but it's definitely will... angry and it's not charging at you any further than that okay uh... so what are the other two doing Staying close to Tully at this point. Okay. You're still hidden, so. <laughs> oh, cool. Even better. I will kind of stand my ground a little bit uh, and just kind of wave 
Bara and Tikros and just go, get across, get across to the other side, as soon as you can. All right. And wait and... until they cross before I cross. All right. So Tikros, with your hiding abilities, you're kind of moving along the side of the roots and staying as low profile as you can. You're not completely hidden from it, but it doesn't seem to be paying attention to you. It's more co focused on Ptolemaeus. Vara, when she steps across, though, the feathers on the back of its neck stand up and it kind of leans forward and growls a little bit more until you pass close to Ptolemaeus. And it's eyeing you and kind of stepping along on the wood line and pacing it, growling at you. But it doesn't move forward. If I see that happening, I think I will try to interrupt its sightline and pass with Vara. I kind of like blocking in between the two, between them. Okay. It definitely, it definitely wants to come out and do something, but it, it every time it steps forward, it kind of shakes its head again and steps back. So it's still bothered by this. But it does not cross. It allows you to get across it. Okay. Well done, Tolly. Poor creature. Something new that I picked up, I guess. Let's keep going. I'm going to put you on this same map here, right about where I'm pinging, which is not showing up for you. So let me try that again. Same map. Same there we go. Map. Ping. Nice. Ping. ping. Nice. You definitely get the sense that while the owlbear is not charging you, it's definitely, you're being followed. It's definitely keeping pace. Okay. For sure. Um, at this branch or so, am I able to, to kind of tr still visually trace the rock to see some sort of opening on this side? Uh, from there, I don't know if you could, but you will see a large blood stain, and uh, I believe a discarded javelin that was not picked up that had missed <laughs> is still uh, uh, lying there as well. And that would be right look... over here. Oh, okay. So I'll. I'll is it still I'll kinda... lying there, Tam? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Uh, have a good <laughs> night. And, uh, <laughs> um. Do I see anything interesting about that blood? Like, can I tell that it's like humanoid blood or, or any different creature? Or uh, if you want to check and do a survival check on it, you can. I shall do that. I probably know nothing. That's an eight. Yeah, I would say it's not something that falls within your skill set. You do notice there's a large volume of blood, so whatever it is, uh, is wounded quite badly. And the, uh, the, the javelin is pointed into it, not away from it. Uh, it's in the ground. It's near angled it? into the ground, so uh, it okay. was probably thrown from very near to where you're standing. So, so definitely more Hyrex was attacking something and not he got wounded and dropped the javelin. Okay. Assuming it was Hyrex, you could say that. Yeah, that's that's what I would that's what I was thinking, regardless of whether or not it's a Drastos or Hyrax. But um Yeah, I'll continue until um if I visually see an opening here, I will start shouting out a Drastos and Hyrax's name and see if they can if, if they are in that area. Okay. How close are you following Vara and Tikaros at this point? Because your tokens are very far spread out, but I don't think you are. I just want to make sure. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I'd be close by. Okay. I want to pick up the javelin on my way past. Okay. If I can. All right. Very good. Uh, Hyrax, you hear Ptolemaeus's voice calling out to your and Adrastos's names. Adrastos, it sounds like they're already here. Oh, then let's waste no more time. Right. We're going to meet them before this kindly old woman uh, suggests that we kill one of them again. Indeed. Hey, yep. Ask them if they have their own teacup. He, he just walks outside. Um, as we're walking out, um, 
Adrasus will say, I am assuming you have some military training, so you know about uh, arrow walls. So, and he'll just kind of like put his shield forward. Stay behind me, please. <laughs> he, he takes out his own shield. Well, la yeah. da <laughs> As well, and lines up. <laughs> Well, you know what? The, big, my... the, the, the question we're all dying to know who shields bigger. But anyway, we'll get to that. Yes, Ptolemy. Uh, probably address <laughs> those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll keep my my sight line, like kind of focused on that that entrance, I suppose. Okay. On the on the the stone see. All right. Well, you will see uh, two shielded persons. Uh, <laughs> Just a, a Spartan phalanx walking out. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that this uh, puddle of blood is, is your doing, either of yours? It's a basilisk. Hurry, keep your eyes down. There might be a little bit more trouble behind us as well. There's a uh. creature that's a, some sort of hybrid between an owl and a bear. Yes. We heard that as well. Uh, make your way into the house, please. Okay. Bar is with us as well. She caught up. Oh, wonderful. Hello. Uh, Adrasto stands up a little straighter when he sees Vara. <laughs> Hyrax looks awkward for a second and says, and I, I, for reasons I cannot yet explain, do any of you have a teacup? Um, I don't believe so. Are we, are we drinking? So it would seem. Of a, yes. Of a water skin. I'm afraid that will not satisfy her. Hmm. <laughs> a couple of empty vials that might work, I guess. If it fill tea. Hi Hyrax shakes his head and heads out to try and <laughs> gather some. What did she give the list? Mud? Uh... Mud? Tree sap? Um, maybe some bark, woods yeah. or something? Just something to make to a teacup out of. Okay. Um... What I have, I have woodworking tools that I'm proficient with. Would I be able to to potentially carve some parts of a teacup? You will, uh, depending on how good of a teacup you make. It will take you some time to do that. So okay. if you're just trying well, to guess. rough something out, roughly cup and bowl shaped, um, you can work on that. But it'll probably, All I'm right. going to say, uh, probably 15 minutes to make a very simple. Almost looks like a cup. cup. All right, but that's How giving that's I... given a hell of a lot of credit because I've made wood cups in the woods with oh. a knife. <laughs> oh, I'm certain it would take a long time. Uh, but I also think we have a little bit of time once we get indoors. What I'm more, more interested in right now is um, uh, how, how quickly can I gather the resources? All right. Um, <laughs> are you going to gather all three things, or are you just going to look for something that you can make a cup out of? So like a tree limb or something. How readily available are the three things? You're you're in a, a woods, uh, but it's fairly dry around here. Mud might be the difficult thing to find. Yeah, that's an issue. Um, hmm. Just hold on. I'm going to ask Vara something. Um, Vara, do you have any means of finding water in a dry wood. Um, yes. You need I, to, what, do you, what exactly do you need? I need to, I need mud, which will need some of this earth to be wet. Um, I mean, to be a bit crass, you could just go take a piss behind a tree and you've got mud. <laughs> Uh, but I could, I could shape some water. I'm sure there's some kind of river. Did we hear running water recently? No, that wasn't recently, was it? Uh, it wasn't recently, no. But, uh, okay. there was, there was water, uh, somewhere not super uh, far away. I, I would rather not go very far. Um... All right. Well, I'm going to set to looking for the other things if if uh, Vara thinks she could help get some mud. 
Yeah, so I mean, I have shape water. Um, but you have to have water shape. to do that. But I need you have to have water, water to shape for that. So. I have. I have a I have a water skin that's still yeah. Cold. I mean, if that's we just true. I have water, water skins, skin. then we can just if pour I, some. If I pour out my water skin, would you be able to use shape water to make mud with it? Yeah, I just kind of move it around. I'd say so. Yeah, that sounds fair. All right. Uh, in that case, I'm going to try and pour out my water skin after confirming with Laura first. I'll okay. pour mine too. All right. Uh, I assume you're going to want to find some place that's not stony, because yeah. much yeah. of what you're standing on is rock. Yeah. So finding okay. a, a place. You'll need to go into the tree line somewhere where there are oh, trees no. and things growing so that you can get to soil All as right. opposed to rock. I'll head into the tree line. I mean, I'll have to look for wood as well anyway. And sap. All right. I think we should stick together for once. Yes, yeah, so no, what there's... exactly are we doing as well? It's complicated. Well, actually, no, it's annoyingly simple. No, I agree. We should definitely stick together. The one thing I do want to make sure is that it's been hours. How are you feeling? Is the plague caught up yet? I've been told that I have not contracted any plague. Then... Solves a lot of our problems already. Perhaps it is the liquid. Maybe it requires physical contact. Even that being the case, I would prefer if we could find a way to help the villagers. Agreed. Yes, things look pretty nasty there. I passed through on my way to try to find everyone. If I'm glad we... to see you're all um, all right. Uh... So there might be an option. That Tikaros and I had found. But I would say we should continue into the tree line, just in case... Well, just in case there's anything, any prying ears near right. this uh, stone structure. Very well. Yes, and aside from that, I would like to know what this old woman knows. And it seems that a teacup is my side of the bargain. Hmm. I suppose it could be worse. Yes, we've traded worse for information. Yes, we have. He says as he kind of adjusts the shoulder of his shield hand, which is still very being held very close to his chest. Yeah, are you are you obscuring the fact that you don't have an arm anymore for me? Cool. I figured you would be. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't want as, mom to yell at me. Uh huh. <laughs> as we keep going further into the tree line, I'll just like kind of talk about about what we found. I'll just say the whole thing about this being the place for the eye. Turns out there's a Medusa on the other side. This hmm. entire stone structure could be filled with creatures that. Worship Farika. And in a stroke of, I would say, good fortune, since it is of Farika and potentially cures of plagues and whatnot, the Medusa did mention that, well, clandestinely, Tikros gleaned from her mind that uh, there is a staff that she's protecting. Hmm. We sought, we sought a cure for plagues, and that was the first thing that popped into her mind. Now I don't know exactly what this staff does, but it's worth looking into. Indeed, indeed. indeed. Was this Medusa hostile? Yes, unfortunately. I can. I tried asking another question, and he, she immediately brandished a couple of swords on us. Which, in fairness, I haven't met many that weren't openly hostile. Fair. She didn't. She also didn't seem to care much about the fact that we carried a an artifact for Farika. 
Good. I would not want to her to mistake me for being loyal. That is true. In any case, what happened on your your side? I spent quite a lot of time here. Made my way around, dodged a basilisk, and ended up conversing in circles with a cryptic old woman who lives in there. But I think she knows more than she initially appears. As eccentric as she is. As old women in the woods tend to be. And now we are searching for... A teacup. She did not have enough for all of us, and I rejected her initial suggestion to kill one of you so that the numbers would match up. How did she know? That is what I asked. I did not get a straight answer. I mean, for all you knew, I would have still been asleep for this. She is a strange woman. Hmm. As I said, she seems to know more than she lets on. Well, information has been our most valuable asset this entire journey, so whatever she's requesting. We can do mud easily, woods easy. Lead on, we'll stick together. And keep an eye out behind us. I may have angered uh, that hybrid monstrosity. I always keep an eye out. As you say this, you hear a noise and suddenly the air around you is just filled with these sharp needles of pine, just like foof, and I need all of you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. That's my worst one. I'm two. Not me. I'm okay. Well, you're a ranger. You can uh, do everything. Except I didn't roll very well. Um, that's only a 14. 13. Ooh. But I rolled 23. Quite well. Oh my goodness. I had a 22. All right. So did anybody fail? What, it was a what DC is the of 15. failure? It was a DC I of 15. Failed. Okay. I got a DC 15? DC Despite 15. what I said, I failed <laughs> by one. <laughs> like I said, I didn't roll well. All right. I got lucky. Those of you who failed are going to take 18 piercing damage from the needles. Those of you who not. succeeded are going to take nine. I will take those gladly. Woof. Ouch. Uh, I immediately cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. I immediately cast Cure Wounds on myself. I, I immediately cast Angry Roar. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just cry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and since we I don't have extra maps drawn I'm just going to uh, drop this thing right here whoa and hello hey buddy surrounding here in some way oh, you, you would all be within oh, 30 no. feet of it so hi pal I want to be surrounding it oh no uh, am I allowed to cast that before this happens whatever this is I would say, since it got a surprise attack on you, let's go ahead and do initiative order, and I will put it at the bottom of the initiative order just to make things nice and right. easy. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll roll on roll 20 so that we know what to I will too. Awesome. Nice and six. Love it. Love sure. it, love it, love it. I know oh, I cleared right, it last it. time. You, it, I cleared it last time, but it still had the same previous entries like it's done before. So... Help me know what your roles were so I get the right ones here. See, yeah, Maura, you got a... It. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. 
Okay, Ptolemaeus, what did you get? Uh, the four is correct here. Okay, Hyrax, you had the 23? Eight. Eight, okay, so that is not correct. Okay, I see the eight. Okay, uh, address us which one of yours is correct. Six. Six, all right. Tikros, did you get a five? Yep. Awesome, it worked. And Vara? Worked. Uh, 13. Okay, well, let you know. It actually did work, except I do have an extra one for Tikaros. Let me get that corrected. All right. And since I said I would put the tree at the bottom of the order, I'm just going to go ahead and add it down there. And that puts Tikaros at the top of the list. So go ahead and do your mage armor stuff. Oh. With a five? How did I get so quick? Oh, wait. Why are you on here three? Never mind. Just a moment. Just a moment. I apologize. <laughs> I'm fighting with roll 20. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get back to you in a moment. <laughs> Mara, what would you like to do? Hello. I'm going to go coffee. Um, let's see. I think similar situation to the owl bear. Uh, I'd like to try to figure out: did we simply trespass, or is this an angry creature, or what? What exactly? She's trying to get an idea of what's happening, or just fully laying into something of of the earth. I think it might be a little bit difficult to figure that out sure. just from what's happened so far. But uh, give me a perception check, and let's. You do really okay. good. We'll see if I can conjure something up here. It's a 13. Not amazing. All right. Um, it, you definitely can tell which tree did this. There is definitely a tree that appears to be moving. And its posture, um, I mean, obviously it attacked. Uh, but as for why, you're not sure. I'm going to say you can't really tell that. But it's definitely uh, up for a fight. And as a bonus, because you rolled on it, and you also notice that the uh, the grass that surrounds you, um, it's almost pointing outward like a palisade around the base of this tree. Huh. Now, it's just small little blades of grass, you know, but they're all pointed out like you would expect. Like the grass is like, yeah, you mess with our big guy. We're going to fight you, too. Precious. I'll give you such a pinch. <laughs> All right. Hyrax, you were going to cure wounds thyself? Hyrax will indeed try to cure his own wounds, but in the midst of doing that, he would also like to say in Sylvan, uh, we mean you no offense, brother. In the lame name of Lady Nylea, I beg you for clemency. Okay. Roll me a persuasion, please. All right. So please, oh, please, oh, please. 14. Okay. I will get back to you on that shortly. All right. Anything else you would like to do? Uh, for the time being, no, except make sure that I'm not armed as I say any of this. All right. Adrastos. Seeing that my friends and companions are not taking immediately hostile actions, and that it sounds like Hyrex is trying to talk the tree down, I'm going to put my javelin back in its um, bodkin, but I'm going to keep my shield up. Kind of in front of Tikaros and Vara. I'm going to move in such a way that I am in front of Tikaros and Vara, but like not aggressively, just kind of like eh, oh. don't touch the squishy ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. All right. Tikaros! Yeah, 
I can see. No, no, what's I'm joking. On. It's not your turn yet. No, it is. Go ahead. Oh, uh, because <laughs> I'm so slow with my dexterity roll. No, I take my turn. I cast mage armor on myself <laughs> and I instantly get shiny and buff. Um, and then I'm just going to step back, actually, just five feet non threateningly because I can see there's an attempt to talk. So that's okay. it for me. All right. Follow me. Being, being at near the, around the same six seconds and stuff. Is it possible for me to also, in Sylvan, kind of redouble the efforts and also uh, mention, it's like, agreed, none of us mean you any harm, uh, and try to give Hyrax a advantage on his roll? Roll another dice, Hyrax, oh. for advantage. Ha! 17. All right. Anything else, Ptolemais? That is my turn. Just gonna stand my ground. All right. Slowly, ah, the tree opens its eyes and kind of looks around and looks specifically at Hyrax. Looks around at everyone else, and you hear in your head, in Sylvan, I can smell the blood on you. blood of the creatures that live in these woods. I protect all who live in these surroundings. Are we free to respond, or is it not our turn? So... I will let you, if you want to respond within this, you can. Blood was not shed needlessly or for sport. It was only for defense. The creature's life was spared. But I apologize if any offense was given. Spared. It lies wounded and bleeding out. You call that spared? You would tread upon its home? And it's going to whisk with its arm towards you. And that is, that is an 18. That is my AC. Okay, well. And that is going to be six bludgeoning damage as it obviously pulls it. I mean, it, it looks big enough. It could have done much more damage. But it just kind of hits you with its limb to knock you back a bit. I'll take it. I'll take it. And if I can respond again, I would like to say, if I may do so, I would like to heal this creature and try to make some of this right. It kind of stands up and actually crosses its limbs in front of it. Hmm. And it leans over, looking down at you. It does bother me that you waited until you were confronted to be a kind soul. Had I not said anything, you would have allowed it to die. You have a duty to protect the creatures of these woods. My concern was to protect my own allies. However, I see now that I made a mistake. Mm. And the rest of you? We've not shed blood. However, we offer our assistance any way we can this creature one of the javelins that struck the blow was mine and i will he 
takes his shield off. And as he takes his shield off, he takes the javelin that's tied to his arm off. So now you can just see. Now Vara sees that there's a stump. And he puts it on the ground and says, and opens his hands and says, if I need to take punishment as well before the healing is done, so be it. But I acted in the protection of myself and my allies. Why are you in my woods? We seek a cure for a village suffering from plague not far from here. Mm, you've brought a plague into my woods? We have not. We are None uninfected. Are mm. and with that, he puts his arms out and takes a deep breath. Uh. And when he breathes out, you get that fresh scent of pine in the air. Like that oh, he's cleansing. <laughs> uh. Love it. I apologize. I may have been hasty, but many of your kind come into these woods and just kill for sport. Kill for fun. Take and take and take. They chop the trees. They kill my friends. No, in breaking, hacking, fighting, burning, destroyers, and usurpers, curse them. Sorry. <laughs> I, I too resent these men you speak of. Yeah. If you keep, you keep making jokes like that, I'm going to start talking like a tree ant, and it's going to take three <laughs> sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. As much as I love advancement, advancement through destruction is no advancement at all. Fine. If we should believe in Nature. Here, take a rest at my feet. No one will harm you while you're here. Thank you. We are actually um, we're looking for um, some items. Yes. That are provided by this wood? If you could maybe shed some light on. The best ways to retrieve these without uh, disturbing any wildlife, so that way we don't find ourselves in any positions to defend ourselves. Uh, that would be most appreciated. And if there is anything we need leave in return for the bounty we seek from these woods, please allow us to negotiate. What do you seek? Mud from the earth. Actually, we already got the mud, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, tree sap and bark. Mm. He thinks about this for a moment. Tree sap. And wood. I'm afraid asking him for those things is being like, yeah, I just want some blood and skin. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Why do you any... need these things? They were requested by the old woman who lives not far from here. And we intend to have dealings with her. Which old woman? There are many. I don't think she ever gave me a name, did she? No. She barely, barely gave me anything. <laughs> she gave you tea! Oh, let alone a straight answer. She um, gave you tea! Not poisoned tea. Oh, okay. Uh, but Hyrax is interested to know that there are a lot of old women in this wood, and he wonders if he means old trees or old animals um with that statement i i guess i'll interject um, there seems to be an old woman living in an opening 
there's a stone structure. One built on Farika's followers, I suppose. And this woman lives in one of the alcoves, not far from here. Farika. In, in my wood? The same stone structure housed the Medusa. Ah. The living vine. Well. Parika does not tread much upon these woods. This is more the blessed place of Nylea. And Keranos. And even Afar has had a hand in lying out what lies here. Out of curiosity, then, I've... I don't claim to know much of the wildlife in the area. But is it natural that there are beasts that are hybrid, hybridized between owls and bears <laughs> in these woods? Ah, pay him no mind. He's, he growls and he, he barks, he howls, he hoots. He's only protecting the smaller ones. Ah, don't mess sense. with the children. Is he, is he from here? His coloration is quite interesting. Hmm. Ah, I believe he was brought here 30 years ago. And he kind of lifts up in the bark and counts rings. His own rings ago. Yes, yes, roughly, roughly 30. There are many guests who live in this place. The space was set aside to house them. So you mentioned the living vines. Is it some sort of a group a place? <laughs> they are vines that live. Yes, the Temple of the Living Vine. Mm. Surely any vine that has not been cut lives. Well, true, except if you're in the dead mire, I understand that the trees that live there are not alive, but not dead. Yes. It's not always a pleasant place. Mm. I believe it was Peleus, but you probably know him by now. I think he goes by Orcos, who named the temple. Back when he conquered it some time ago. It was he who planted me. This, area, this place. This Sorry, place. you were muted a little bit. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh. And it was he who led us here in the first place. Mm. He led you here. He's home. Oh. No, he left. So then all is going to end. Say that. Oh, he's not supposed to step foot in the woods again until his mission's completed. Didn't step foot in the woods, no. Hmm. He left Nora a little bit er earlier. Nora directed us here. Hmm. Exactly. How is he? Well, quite well. Yes. 
I guess he, you remember him. Did he seem him. sad? His mood was more downtrodden of late, but he seems... I, at the risk of sounding self-aggrandizing, he seemed to be lightened by his interactions with us. He was sad, and then he sparred with us, and then he left happier. <laughs> he does love to fight. Well, he and I are allies in that, if nothing else, but there are several other things we agree on as well. Hmm. He was quite he was quite the warrior in his younger days. He's quite the warrior in his older days, I assure you. Yes, he's still in, in good condition for that. Mm. Now, when he conquered the southern lands for Heliod back in the day, oh, that was a glorious sight. He himself took on an army of ten thousand. It was a sight to see. But I'm sure he's aged a bit in the last 500 years or so. So much as most people. So did he mention her? Her being... His love. Hyrax turns wandering as well, since I think the party originally met him before they met Hyrax. He's very little of, of himself, more so of our face, if anything mm. else. Yes, we, well, often, we often spar for information from him. Uh, we learned of his, of his grave most recently, but I don't think Which one know. is that? Um, the one we most recently interacted with was um goodness uh near a near a clearing there were stones and uh, on a cliff almost looking over a wooded area that is a good one there are many oh of course good to know Well, again, why do you seek the sap in this wood and this mud? Are you attempting to build a golem? No, only a cup for an old woman. A cup out of mud? Please tell me you didn't pee to make the mud. That would be a horrible thing to drink out of. It was suggested, but I did not care for the idea. It was suggested before I knew it was becoming a mug. Give me some credit. <laughs> he, he reaches over and pats Vara on the back. <laughs> fine, don't worry. It's fine. Oh, I'm afraid I don't have any teacups. Hmm. Oh, I assume but, she needs to break them out. But he turns and puts his several limbs up in the air and shakes them for a bit. And then just stands there. Oh. What is happening? Patience. Very well. But... Now you, you mentioned a golem. Um, Hyrex, are you accidentally bringing this woman the materials necessary to make a, certainly, some kind of effigy? Certainly the materials required to craft a, a teacup would not be enough to make a golem unless it was the size of a teacup. You will hear a whistling noise. And he, and he brings down 
these two very large acorns. Um, and hands them down to you, Hyrax. These are roughly cup shaped. Yes. Yes, they are. Thank you. Mm. Thank my work. sister. She provided those. She has my gratitude. Oh, and before we go back with these, and before too much time has passed, please do you know where that bleeding creature is? I would assume it's in the woods near where you left it. Mm. Then I'll return shortly. None of you should feel obligated to follow me. This is my mistake. He's going to reach up and pull off a pine cone and hand it to you. Carry this in front of you so that the creature will know you're coming in my name. Thank you. I'll do so. You were not All alone you... in your attack. I'm Irex, sorry? I wish to accompany you. I wounded the creature as well. I wish to make amends. I'll accept. Told me as we can, I hear you. Damn it. <laughs> I would like to point out that even though we did not <clears throat> wound the creature, we are still of one party and of one mind. So your mistake is ours, and we all bear the consequences together. Agreed. Very well. Uh, and I'm just going to move along, pine cone in my hands, trying to uh, find the creature again, the basilisk. So all of you, I will say, because of this conversation, took a little while, uh, took a short rest, but because of where you rested, you have the benefits of a long rest. Nice. Okay. Wonderful. Nice. That's good too. Uh, and you also smell of pine. Yay. <laughs> Love, Love that. Best Adrastos has ever smelled. <laughs> Can I remember that scent specifically so that I could uh, use prestidigitation to, to replicate it next time? All right. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Excellent. All right. Well, I'd like to go find the basilisk then. All right. Uh, you find it near the house in the woods lying. Uh, it, it definitely looks in pretty bad shape. It, it growls a bit when you come near it, but it still has uh, two weapons sticking out of it. And it's lying in a large pool of blood. It does not right. look like it has long for this world. I'm going to, holding the pine cone out, I'm going to approach very slowly. Um, speaking in whatever language I might think it, it, I doubt it understands any language. I'm going to try Sylvan. I'm going to follow up with Draconic, but basically just trying to reassure it as I approach slowly. Okay. Uh, as you start to approach, it immediately turns towards you and it see its eyes begin to glow, but it notices the pine cone in your hand and its eyes go back to its still shiny, but duller color. Okay. And when I when I stoop down, um, Hyrax will reach out very carefully and toward the wounded area, and I'm going to cast uh, cure wounds at a second level. All right. See. That is he heals 14 points of damage. Wow. All right. Please tell me you pull out the weapons. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. As I'm doing so, I pull out the weapons very gently. 
Um, normally, you would not want to do that, but when you're magically healing him, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. You heal it, it gets up on its feet. It's still wobbly. I mean, it still looks pretty damaged, but it's far better than it was. And it actually comes up and places its head against your waist and just kind of leans into you like a dog would. I'm going to pet the basilisk. I can't not pet the basilisk if it's doing that. Good. Right. Good. Stop. What a, what a sentence. I'm going to pet Yeah, I was about to say, that, <laughs> that's the name of this episode. He looks down at the basilisk <laughs> and whispers, and he whispers. He, I don't know if anyone else could hear him. I, I don't think that he would let them hear, but he whispers. At first, I thought you were something unnatural. It didn't belong in the woods, but now I see who you are. A refugee like me, adopted as I was. It backs up and looks up at you, turns and walks away into the woods. And he stands up and returns to the group. All right. We have the acorns. We should probably return to the old woman. Yeah. Let me see one of them. And he's going to take out his woodworking tools and try and make them more acceptably teacup-like on the okay. way. All right. Uh, if you're going to t spend time to do it, then you won't have to roll. If you're trying to do it quickly, then I'll need a quick uh, survival roll for me. Or dexterity. You can use either one. Since you're using oh, right. uh, your skills. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll and see how well I do. Survival. It's like a good bet to me. That is 19. Oh, that's excellent. So you, you make fairly nice looking cuts out of these. You actually, it's a kind of a shame to hand them over. You're able to use the top of the acorn as a saucer cup <laughs> and uh, the acorn itself to. Uh, Make a nice cup out of it. So, Hyrax, is there anything else we need to know about the old woman? I don't know. I got very little out of her. As I said, she speaks in riddles. Hmm. Or in insanity. Don't bother commenting on how she seems to speak to another person. Can't see. She will deny that she's doing so. How charming. If you think so. Well, I guess you're gifted in diplomacy, are you not? Yes, but not against insanity, if you were saying it like that. Hmm. Logic is my strongest weapon, and if everything is illogical, then I have no say. Then hopefully she's very pleased with these cups. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I see, assume we move on? Yeah, let's go. I'll go back to the base of the tree and get my stuff and start putting it on my back. All right. Everybody's. Because nicely... I did not take my weapons into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's nicely equipped up, and you are back at the entrance to the old woman's house. The kindly old woman, mm -hmm. as she does offer tea. Oh, yeah, and I would give Adrastos' javelin back after pulling it out of the uh, basilisk. Um, what are you doing with the pine cone? Hmm. Is there anything special about the pine cone? You know what? I would like to plant it. Okay. Where would you like to plant it? I, I don't know. Could I find a good spot? Uh, what would you consider a good spot? I'm, I'm asking you, what would you consider a good spot? Hmm. hmm. 
maybe I don't plant it yet. Maybe I can plant it further down the road somewhere. Okay. So I'll hold just on gonna, to it. Just going to hang on to it. All right. Very good. Are I'll you hold on it? to it and then wait for a future opportunity that seems right. So you're going to put it in a bag or something when you pass? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you are outside the door of the old woman. What is your intent or plan at this point? Teacups in hand. I'm going to lead the way if no one else wants to. No, I think what it makes sense for you to lead. Yeah, I was about to say, you're the one yeah. who knows her. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> uh, yep, he ascends the stairs and enters. Everyone following behind? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. All right. She's busy at her little countertop of where she keeps her tea making supplies and things. When you walk in and you're back. I am. As are all of my comrades. Mm. Oh. How many of them are there? It's everybody in the room because I'm looking at tokens, so I'm trying to make sure if everybody's entering the room or not, so I know what's going on. <laughs> Hello. Four of them. Oh my, I'm I'm afraid I'm I'm short on teacups. I. He holds out the makeshift cups, the the recently made cups. Oh, oh, amazing! Yes, they are quite lovely. It doesn't matter that they're handmade. I like that personally. Thank you so very much. She'll take them and turn her back a moment later and hand out tea. In both her teacups and the new teacups. I'm sorry I can't join you. Um, I'm still one short. Of a cup? Yes, I only have three. Well, I guess five now. If one of you would like to die. I believe we could share. Uh, how, how big are the acorn cups compared to the uh, fur cups? Uh, it's a big acorn, so, you know, mug size. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just point that out. I was like, the, the acorns are a fairly bit bigger. Well, I'm sure we, we could share with I these. I don't want to be a bad host. Oh, you, you, are a, you are not. You are a lovely host. Thank you for offering us tea. Um, maybe do introductions. Laura's like, you're a lovely host, and Hyrax can just barely disguise how he looks at her like, you fucking say what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I have to know your names to introduce you. Yes. Um, I can go first. My name is Vara. Uh, Vara Tideborn. Vara Tideborn. Ptolemaeus. Wonderful. Uh, oh, Ptolemaeus? Uh, Ptolemaeus, this is Vara Tideborn. Vara Tideborn, this is Ptolemaeus. Lovely to meet you. And <laughs> Vara will shake his hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake her hand. Like, indeed. I'm Hyrax. Hyrax. Wonderful. Um, Ptolemaeus, this is Hyrax. Hyrax, Ptolemaeus. Um, um, Vara Tideborn, this is Hyrax. Uh, Hyrax, Vara Tideborn. Wonderful to meet you. And she'll shake his hand as well. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yeah, I'll oh, play along the entire time. What's your name? We have to introduce you as well. Oh, me. <laughs> Helenar. Helenar. Beautiful name. And your friends? No, I'm not going to introduce you. Be quiet. Oh, we don't get to meet them? Meet who? Your friends. Are you my friends? Well, yes. Um, Var well, you've already met Ptolemaeus and you've met Hyrax. Um, I don't know the other two yet. They haven't said their names. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, Tikaros. Hello. Oh, Tikaros. Uh, Tikaros, this is Vara Tideborn. Hyrax. Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus. Hyrax. Vara Tideborn. This is Tikaros. Wonderful to meet you. 
So Adrasto speaks up last, and he's kind of been looking at his remaining hand with the gold uh, wrap on it. And then he leans back and he smiles and he says, Adrastos of the Dawnbringer clan. Everyone, Adrastos of the Dawnbringer clan. Uh, Adrastos of the Dawnbringer clan. This is Vara Tideborn, Hyrax, Tikaros, Ptolemaeus. Nice to meet you. A pleasure to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Well, now that everyone's been introduced. I feel like we're missing some people, right? She stops for a moment and looks up. Oh. Well, I'm I'm sorry to hear about your your friend Agrios. Um oh. and and Ariana. It's so it's so difficult to deal with those who have gone on to to other places. Yes. We live I'm for sorry, I don't have teacups for them, and, and plus, with them not actually being here, it would be a bit difficult. I didn't mean to leave them out, of course. That's all right. Here, and um, Var will kind of pour some of her uh, tea onto the ground as like an offering in their place. Oh, that's a nice gesture. Yes, I know, I'll clean it up. Excuse me, and she walks over and gets a rag and comes over and starts polishing up on the floor. Wonderful. A lovely gesture. Uh, let me, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, we're in a large tree, I thought that was, sorry, uh, she'll help <laughs> clean up as well. Yes, this tree's been here for a long time. Uh, I only made my home in it after, well, anyway. Hmm. Um. Why have you come? What can I do to help you? For my part, I wish to know if there's a way to cure the ailing villagers in nearby Kremnos. Perfect. Exactly what you were supposed to say. Well, um, then why did you come to see me? Why do you think I have the answers you seek? because one of the villagers was heading into this wood in search of answers from someone or something called the Eye. And, and with that, she just kind of takes a step back and... Oh. That's the reason you all have come. It's also the fa There's also the fact that on the other side of this structure there is a medusa who claims that the eye is her that is the name that people refer to her as oh. i guess it was too soon to get my hopes up i thought he sent you uh, yes, well, I know. I know. I shouldn't get my hopes up. Well, who might he be? We were directed this way by a particular someone. My last love, of course. No, oh, he's yes. not just mine. I know, but he's the one who cho uh, he what was chose the me. Orcus. No, there was another name that he used to go by. To get the tree corn. Do we remember Tam? <laughs> I don't know. Do you? I don't. I don't. I still Tam does not remember. Does Hyrax Elias. remember? Elias. Elias. I would think he would remember. So Elias. It hasn't been that long. Yes, that was one of his names. No, I know it wasn't at that time. We know of him. I would consider us friends. Hmm. I Certainly. see. And she just kind of gives you that sideways <laughs> look. I see. <laughs> hmm. No, just kidding. And he looks she looks over at Tikaros. I guess you're his friend too, then. 
Not like the way you're insinuating. Good. I guess you're the one. Oh no! Just kind of um, scowls at you. Not at all in that way. It is a it is a purely friendship based friend. I know. Yes, and she, I know she that's of... what he said to you too. <laughs> that's what he tells everyone. If it makes oh. you feel any better, we met him as a party, as a group. We were not split in any way. Yes, yeah, so did we. It was a wonderful time. We spent so much time under the trees, in the sunlight. Has he sang for you? He has such no, a beautiful singing voice. We just fought. Competitive, yes. He's good at that, too. He's good at many things. Yes, I I don't think they need to know every detail. Do you believe you can help us with this um, plague affecting criminals? Plague? Well, no. I, it's not why you're supposed to be here. Uh, what would you Tell like me about this plague. Then? What does it do? Where is it from? Oh, well, I, you are our host. I, I would hate to... to uh, oh, you're here and now for... and you've been sent. I might as well do what I can do. The plague seems to have been caused by an orb with an image of a fingerprint on it. The orbs generally try to imitate the power of the gods. Hmm, interesting. In this case, perhaps Farika herself. And this one was left behind, I assume, by the same person who was described to me by my companions. Well, you say person, but if it's someone with the power of the gods, are they not a god themselves? They might be. We're still trying to figure that out. Could it be one of the gods in disguise? You know, they have a tendency to do that sort of thing. That multiple gods have mentioned that this was an impersonator. Hmm. Well, so all you seek is a cure for this one plague? Well, we seek many things really but that's our current pressing matter well what does this plague do is it a coughing plague bleeding from the eye plague uh, fluids no from the nose flesh. and body does it place them in the restroom for days at a time it rots flesh from bone a flesh eating plague oh, that sounds distressing how quickly does it advance Hours. He, uh, Adrasos holds up his arm in a matter of moments. Ah. Oh, no. It's fine, you don't have to raise your paw here. It isn't the same as that. Oh, Sometimes. good. I was told hours. Ah. Interesting, very quick. Put out the candles. Cover the door. You'll find a, a sheet that'll black out the entrance. We must have it completely dark inside. Irex gets to work trying to make it dark. You can hear as she shuffles around. The, who has dark vision? Who doesn't? Just so I can be clear. I do. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So Tikros, Ptolemaeus, all you hear is the shuffling noises. The rest of you... Uh, here as she moves around the room and makes her way up a hallway at the far end of the building and disappears for a moment. You can hear digging around, moving some boxes or stuff around. Oh, where is it? It must be here somewhere. Oh, if I lost it, he's going to be so unhappy. He did so much. Yes, I know. He brought it for all of his 
It's okay. It's fine. They won't steal it. I'm pretty sure he's not a thief. And if he is, we'll just let them know the tea was poisoned and all will be fine. It's okay. Quiet. She comes back down the stairs a few moments later with something wrapped in a cloth. Oh, I forgot to take your teacups. I'm sorry. Would you mind setting those down? I don't think it's good for you to have them while we're doing this. Hyrax would have already put his down. She will go to that place in the center of the room and set this down on the ground. Now. You must all be completely quiet. Not a word, not a sound. And no light, no eating or drinking, and whatever you do, don't feed it after mid. No, that's the other thing. I Does she have a mogwai? She's. Begins What's to the start... time zone that we can't fit it after midnight? Midnight where? <laughs> Anywhere. She begins to unwrap this thing, and she gets down to the last part of it, and it's just like a thin cloth over it. And you can see it's some kind of a sphere. Kind of a darkish tint, round object lying on the floor. Now. Everyone agrees. Quiet, correct? She reaches down, pulls the cover off the top of it, and you see a very large eye that immediately begins scanning around the room. It's just rolling in place, looking around, trying to find something now you settle down stop. stop and it turns and faces her and the iris on it kind of squints down a little bit and if you can if you could tell anger from just an iris you would see the seething anger in this eye Now you listen to me. I'm going to ask you a simple question. And if you don't answer me kindly, I have a fresh salt water bath for you. Oh. I kind of winces and blinks a little bit. Now you better behave this time. Apparently there is sickness that has happened in the city of Kremnos. I want to know if there is a cure. Show me the cure. And the eye blinks a couple of times. All right. Just a, just a moment. And she goes and she grabs one of the candles and sets it down behind it. And looks at all of you and kind of you know and kind of points everybody back away from the direction that the eye is facing i'm gonna move and away irax will try and sneak away without making a single noise yeah i'll, I'll place a hand on um we have some light now at this point. She's lit the candle. There is no. She has not lit the candle. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll place a hand on um, Tali and Tigros gently and kind of step back and and lightly pull back on them to signal. Okay. Yeah. If that's the case, I'll follow. Right. Okay. I want a stealth check from everyone to Ooh. see how quietly <laughs> you are able to do this and move back. Gosh. I don't like that. <laughs> All right, Adrastos. This is your time. Yeah, I don't have to be the stealthiest yeah. you've ever been. <laughs> All right, we've got a 17 from Hyrax. All right. 
14 for Tigros. Okay. 14 from me as well. Okay. <laughs> I see some <laughs> smiling faces that but hear no hear no numbers. Red and I, Red and I did the same face. <laughs> we both. Went. I do like that we did it towards each other, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got a two. Oh, oh, I did a little better than that. I got a ten. Oh. Uh, I'm just... So wait, no, hold you... on. I have disadvantage to stealth. Excuse me. Uh, I forgot about that. It's a six. <laughs> yeah. As you are moving back, as soon as you kind of break away from the direction that she's facing, she puts her fingers down and lights the candle. And the candle shines through, and the eye is like a projector on the wall. Oh, neat. And begins to show a picture. But then somebody scrapes their foot. Maybe it was Adrastos, maybe it was Vara. And the eye immediately shifts and turns in your direction. And she knocks the candle over and throws a cloth over it. Oh no. She picks it up. Takes it and walks it around the corner. And you hear... As she moves some stuff around and you hear the lid of something close. A thump. She makes her way back down. Oh. Oh, no. I'm not sure if it saw you or not. Um. She lights the candle. I'm afraid that I didn't quite catch what it was showing. But I'm afraid that you may have gained its attention. Did any of us catch what it was showing? Give me a perception check, Hyrax. I certainly will. <laughs> I am the perception guy, and I rolled a natural 18 plus 9 is uh, 27. All right. Yes, you caught a glimpse of this. Uh, it was showing on a map that was forming. The map did not complete, but it had two symbols on it, two swords. One sword had a hilt that was black and appeared to have wings engraved into the pommel. The other one had a sapphire red handle. And it appeared the pommel on it looked almost like almost like two snakes wrapped around the hilt that you would have to grab the snakes and their heads would face forward down the blade. Yeah, Hyrax is going to recite this information off at, with, with his eyes staring forward as though he were seeing it in front of him somehow, just giving the details. Two swords on a map. One. A black handle, wings, the bird, another one, sapphire, red, right? and just sort of rattling off those details you just gave. Excellent. Very good. Um, I'm going to need you to do a favor for me. Um, the eye I have was, um, borrowed and um one of the things it's not their fault they made a simple mistake it was an accident um and i'm afraid it's still somewhat attached to its owner mm. um and he might want it back and who's a, who is that? Um, well, I'm not quite sure how to explain it. Um, it's a large uh, creature, um, multiple eyes, uh, and that's 
you know, we shouldn't miss one, I guess, but, you know, um, there's one big eye and several smaller ones. A very large mouth. Um, quite an ego to go with it as well. Um, but if he saw anything of where we're at, he could quickly figure out um, and where we are, and, and would probably come looking for his eye. Um, could you get rid of it for me? Could we, could we perhaps stay here and see if he comes and uh, take care of it? You're very welcome to stay. I hope you enjoy the house. Oh. Uh, you please are... remember to to feed the, the unicorns. Um, put out water for them every once in a while. And any guests, you need to make tea for them. There's you unicorns. Corn. Is that the horse with the horn that I saw? Uh, yes. Yes. See? I think it already left. Uh. How you... would we dispose of this if that is what we decided to do? Um, quickly. And um, Very I know that it's, I know that fire doesn't seem to bother it. Um, oh, don't let it out in the sunlight. If you do, it, uh, um, well, it has this nasty habit of, of, of disintegrating people. Disintegrating people with only its vision? Uh, yes. Interesting. Be a useful weapon. Mm, no, too dangerous. How would we keep it? Yes, well, we can take care of it. Excellent. Sorry Excellent. to have uh, disturbed the the peace that you had with this. It's not your fault. I I usually won't communicate with it uh, with anyone else in the house, just in case such a thing should happen. Um, Orcos was quite clear when he brought it to us and made the trade. No, I'm not going to give them all the details. There was a trick. Well, there was a tree outside that mentioned that Orcos was not to step foot in the forest until it <sighs> completes the Alabaster in his big mouth. Um, question. So, out of character, just asking, did anyone keep any of, like, the black sludge that... It, we couldn't. Okay, we couldn't. Okay, good. Like, I, I mean, I don't think we That's... could. That's fine. It would probably be bad, but I'm just saying that sounds like a good bet to destroy the eye, personally. Yeah, because uh, I remember I tried to scoop some up and it almost went for me. So mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Failing all else, I think I know one way we could try and destroy the eye. I think I know what you're talking about. And risking going back there might be worth it if this if this thing is that dangerous. Now that now that it's back in its case and you sent its owner who we'll just know how to figure out where it is at this point, if we were to leave would the woods be safe? Um, well, I, I would assume you'd take it with you if you left, correct? Let's say, let's say so. Yes. Um, I, I think, yes. And if we were to keep it in the case and not let it see anything else? I'll make a deal with you. Uh, 
I mean, the lovely teacups, uh, I'll keep those, and you can have the eye. But there's only two things you have to promise me. One, don't tell Orcos you have the eye. All right, I'm good at keeping secrets, at least. And, uh, try not to die. Yeah, that is our, that is our daily mission. It's right, nice to be commuted again. What? Why? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It just sometimes it doesn't. It's just cutting out, huh? <clears throat> yeah. It's like not. I'm, it's not like I'm speaking any softer. That's weird, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> that second one's ongoing, whether or not we'd had an eye or not. So. Yeah. Well, I was hoping I would be able to help you, but. I know that you actually came here to speak to the eye, and I guess, therefore, I should, I should take you to see him. Is that not the eye there? Oh, Is no. It? No, of course not. You, you could understand my confusion. It is a literal eye. Ah. Uh. It is. That is very. That is very true. It is something to behold. But well, no, it's, is it's it's not the true source of the eye. And while I think that it gave us a, something to look for, um, without knowing a direction or a destination, you could be searching for a long time. And I think maybe, maybe the eye would be willing to help you, but. You will have to speak to it yourself. It, we're not on very good terms. Is it also not the Medusa that's living here as well, then? <laughs> no. I can't imagine she would claim to be the Eye. Although you might tell the Eye that, and then it won't be as angry with me. Interesting. She will leave the room and come back a moment later carrying a small chest box with handles on it uh, made out of lead. And so who is going to take ownership? I will. You seem like a very trustworthy type who wouldn't do anything outrageous or unplanned. Excellent. She will hand it to you. You read her well. Yes. Now, don't open it. Don't talk to it. Never let it see sunlight. If the box should come open, don't say anything around it. It listens very carefully for an eye. You might be surprised how well the eyes can hear. And how do you disintegrate people? Oh, it does that on its own. Don't look into the eye. And please, you're not going to play. You you seem trustworthy. You wouldn't play with it, would you? No, just in case. I just want the knowledge. Oh, well. Um, as I said, the, the creature it was once a part of, well, attached to, taken from, no, borrowed from, collected from absconded from, stolen from. Um, and is there beauty in the eye? No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't say that. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Well, technically it would be with Tikros now because she's the beholder of the... Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> but it's that's... in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. You know, I once did an entire one-shot 
specifically so I could make that joke. Oh my god. I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> Me neither. Nor am I. And it was beautiful, if I must say so <laughs> myself. I hope the entire table groaned once they realized. Oh, uh, I, I, yes. I, I think if we had been at a physical table, they would have flipped it. <laughs> away, which was beautiful. Mm. <laughs> Let's get going then, to the eye, the actual one. <laughs> and as you are being escorted through the woods, the path changes from roots and, and mesas to more paved type of paths. There are still the ravines. You're still very obviously in the Ravenswood, but it's not as uh, trees and plants. It's gotten to be more formalized. There's definitely structures, kind of like that temple of the vines that's got the, the stonework to it. Things are a little bit more constructed. And as you proceed further, the root paths are replaced by chains. Large steel chains that are suspended between the mesas, between the outcroppings of rock. And eventually, you come out on a path, and ahead of you you can see what looks to be some form of altar, maybe? Okay, come along. Come along. She moves up closer into it. Make your way around. Who has erected these steel chains? Hyrax asks with barely concealed disdain. Well, they were forged by Perforos, I believe. They're the only thing that could contain the eye. Now, does this one also disintegrate people if we uh, make noise? <laughs> or well, it never has, but I, it seems to be well, for lack of a better word, all seen. I've never known it to destroy anything. But... All right. I will tell you that it will answer your questions, and you will be given truth in all answers. How many questions can we ask? Um, until it gets bored. Let's prioritize, then. <laughs> um, she points to Ptolemaeus. If you would, please, join the circle around, please. Right. There's no hiding from the eye. I'll just stand right there. Stop. Who's our question asker? I feel like we should focus on one person interfacing with it. Oh, trust me. It will choose who it wants to speak to. Oh. All right. She takes a step on up onto the altar, takes her staff and taps in the center of the altar. Hello? Wake up! Are you in there? I have come to see you. Around you are these pools of not quite water, but it's it's blue as you can see outside the areas of the map. And slowly, the color of it begins to change, and it darkens to more of a, a purplish hue. And then the rocks in the center of the altar begin to turn and shift and move outward. Until they pull back 
to form a ring and expose a very large eye in the center. I hate that. <laughs> oh, well, here, let me make you hate it more. <laughs> Your guide stands up, arms back, head up. Who seeks an audience with the eye? Um, I do. We do. Our little crew here. Hello, my name is Vara. And it shifts around in there and looks around at all of you. This one big eye that makes its way around. Rex of Satessa. Welcome, Hyrex of Satessa. But are you really of Satessa? Or do you just claim it? Does it claim you? It does. Hmm. Or did. Where does this where does this sound come from? Do we are we hearing it speaking? It is, in our it minds, is your host is it speaking. It is coming out of Oh, it's coming out of her. Oh yeah. Cool. It's her. Hmm. No one else wishes to speak. We seek assistance with a plague. Which plague? There are many. The one in Krimnos. Currently. Hmm. Again, there can be many. The one that was introduced recently by a stranger who left an orb bearing the image of a fingerprint. Yes. So. Which of those plagues do you wish to eliminate? The one that rots flesh from bone of those that touched it. Again, I ask you to narrow. Which of these plagues do you wish to eliminate? It has spread many plagues then. Well, you've been present, have you not seen? You yourself, looking at Adrastos, you yourself have lost your breath and your arm. Do he each of at... these plagues... Go ahead. Do each of these plagues have different means of stopping them? Yes and no. Many things can be solved if you solve the problem at the source. Do they come from the same source, then? Yes. And no. Who is the stranger who leaves these orbs? Ah, there is, there is a question to answer. The one who leaves these orbs is the one you seek. He is the one who will bring about the change of the world by destroying all things, and therefore freeing the world from darkness. This is your personal opinion, or this is prophecy? This is the truth. Is there a name by which we would know him? I believe you've referred to him as... The Hooded One. Yes. By what name does he call himself, if any? Ah. He calls himself... The Servant? He is referred to as The Child. He answered Servant once. Of... He answered once. To you, and he looks at Tikaros. You named him. 
I did? Yes. Is he pretending to be Tavi, my love? No, he is not. Okay, then. Do you ever have a child, Tigros? I've had dreams of this recently. I myself do not remember it well. What race is he? You speak of the hooded one. The hooded one, yes. He is beyond any race. The satyr spirit in the temple. Did she speak of a child? Are you asking the I? Are you asking someone else? I'm asking my group. Okay, just making sure. I uh, am. <clears throat> my mind was rather elsewhere in that temple. I don't recall. And to be perfectly honest, I don't recall that I, any of them speaking of anything other than those rings. Can you remind me, Tam, because player does not remember, but Drastus would. What was the name that the spirit gave us? The satyr woman. Crap. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Hold on while I find my notebook. <laughs> oh. I may have to dig for that one. That's been a while. Okay, so well what then is, in what is the In the spirit to... of brevity... Is the hooded one the child of insert spirit name here? <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> no. Matira. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See, it was good. And then that got changed to Materia in the thing. But anyway, that's That's right. Yes. <laughs> Materia. There we go. <laughs> because then everybody it's... started making the Materia. Why couldn't I remember that? I don't know, because I'm an yeah. old man. Anyway. You're, you're told is... that he calls himself the servant. To whom does he pledge his service? The Nyx. Hmm. Or as he refers to it, the Creator. What was the answer to my question? Which question? Sorry, there were some... Is, is the Hooded One the child of Materia? No. Okay. Yeah, that was stated, no. Sorry, I didn't no hear it. That's no, why no problem. I'm just clarifying <laughs> that, yeah, I, it was definitely a no on that. Yeah. How has he come, how has the Hooded One obtained the power that mirrors the gods? He is one with the Nyx. But to answer your question more precisely, to the wrath of the gods themselves. How do we confront the Nyx? That depends on what your goal is for the Nyx. There are those who confront the Nyx to request favors. There are those who would attempt to destroy the Nyx, but that is destroying the fabric of creation itself. While possible, that may be an inconceived idea, but there are those who will try. Do you wish to destroy the Nyx? I suppose to start, I would just prefer a conversation. Hmm. The Nyx is everywhere at all times. Simply speak. But speaking does not mean you will be spoken to, or that you will comprehend the answer. The gods then yes. can be responsible for these attacks. Yes. Didn't, didn't mean to cut you off. It's good. One of you go ahead, because I couldn't parse the oh, two. Uh, he said, uh, are the gods truly responsible then for these attacks? Hmm, fair question. Some would say yes, some would say no. The 
Would we be able to seek more answers about the Hooded One? Tracing the lost village of Tavi. Surely. I would say it's at the center of that which you seek to know. Is there any way that these attacks may be averted without having to confront the Nyx in such a violent way? Of course. Destroy the source. The source is not then the Nyx. The Nyx is the source of all things, but the source of the problem would be the Hooded One. Would you not agree? I would, but if he considers himself a servant of the Nyx, then... And he is one with the Nyx, as you said. I, I suppose a, a further question on that is, is he considering himself a servant of the Nyx because the Nyx has commanded it, or is he just proclaiming he is serving the Nyx? Yes. So both. Yes. Okay. Back to the task at hand, then. The immediate plague that afflicts the people of Krimnos, at least the surviving people of Krimnos at this moment. How would we stop that? How would we cure it? You would have to journey to destroy the source. And that would be difficult. It might be easiest to allow them to die, bury the ashes, raise the city, start fresh. It may be the easiest course, but it is not ours. You asked a path. I only speak the truth. What is the difficult path other than seeking the source? Is there no immediate way we can help these people? No, not immediate. Anything that you attempt at this point will require a journey. You may a journey beseech, to where? You may beseech the gods. But... It is not likely they will do much to help. Although you might catch a god and be able to provide them some reason that would be benefit to themselves, and then they would act. You could find the hooded one that you seek. You could see if he would be willing to stop the destruction, but I think that is unlikely. You could uncover his plan. You could find the source of the pain. You could solve the loss that drives the plague. The loss? Yes. What? The wasting is a consumption. It consumes everything, attempting to feel, fill the void that it feels deep inside itself. It has feelings of its own. Just of course. Think. Even the returned have feelings. The Eidolon of a returned even more so. By what means can we communicate with this wasting, as you call it, or to help it? Travel to the heart. Travel to the source. And the source is the hooded one, or the source is Nyx? No. And yes, the Nyx the is the source of all things. 
What is the source of which you speak? The tempest that lives in the heart of the dead mire. Here is a cryptic one for you. The anvil rod owl by the name of Ubo refuses to trust a certain type of people. And my question is, those type of people, do they have a better chance at communicating and receiving response from the Nyx. Hmm. You speak of the Nyxborn, those who have died, but not died. Those who have been touched and touched the Nyx, and the Nyx is a part of them. You speak of yourself and your friend. Yes. Well, haven't you already spoken to them? Hasn't the Nyx already responded? More so about this new problem. Again, anyone may beseech the Nyx. It is everywhere at all times. And you will most likely receive an answer. Sometimes the answer is no. But will you understand and listen to the answer? That's the question. I'm How personally do we... done here. Sorry, two people. <laughs> Sorry. The eye goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> How do we, um... How do we do the most good? Living a proper life. Thinking of others above yourself. Placing a value on the lives and well-being of others as the best priority. Do no evil. As um, this hooded figure, the servant, do they believe they're doing good or are they intentionally doing harm? Oh, yes, to both. They absolutely, without doubt, are committed to their cause. And they feel oh. that their cause can only be achieved through causing the harm that they cause. Is it possible then to dissuade them, or can they only be stopped by destroying them? Dissuading them would be a difficult task. But you ask, is there any possibility that they could be changed? There's always possibility. Likelihood. Defeating them would be the most practical course. I must ask a selfish question. I apologize, friends, but it has weighed on my heart for too long. Does Aramaz of the Sun Claw still draw breath? Yes. I must ask a question that is perhaps out of the line. Is this hooded one the child of Tikaros or someone that Tikaros used to be? No. So 
Who is Serenity? Hmm. And he looks directly at Tikaros. More than half of them, one who is with you. Serenity exists no more. Is it possible for anvil rots to have souls? Yes. Is Prime considered one to have a soul? Considered by whom? By everybody outside of Nyctos. No. I feel as though we have now, even more questions, but they will not be answered here. I answer only the questions that I am asked. It was still enlightening, and I thank you. I wish to ask one more, if I may. Of course. What is the mission of the one who calls himself Orgos? He is... To make amends for his sins in life. I see. So, how do we find the source? How do we get to the tempest quickest to fix all of this plague? Quickest route to find the tempest. Didn't you say that was the source? Find, yes. And what is the quickest route? The quickest route would be a straight line. However, not knowing the final location, finding the hooded one. But then you must solve the problem of the hooded one. And you do not have the ability to do so now. And once the hooded one is defeated, and the darkness is released, you do not have the capacity to defeat the Tempest because you will be unable to fill the void. Who can fill the void? I'm sorry, was that the question? Who can fill the void? Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. The void may or may not be filled. Who can fill the void would be the one who can solve the loss. A void that is destroyed, is it filled or is it gone? Interesting question. I will say there are two paths. You must either soothe or eliminate. How do we soothe the loss? 
Mm, you must ease its pain. Restore it back to what it once was. You have to bring the serenity to the maelstrom. We probably shouldn't tarry, friends. I'd hate for the hooded one to get too far ahead of us. Thank you for the answers. Always. Can we come back sometime? No. Oh. Good to know. Before we leave, we had a couple of selfish questions to ask. I would like to wish to ask another. This is your chance to find out answers. Ask your questions you wish answered. Can the memories of the people of the realm be altered and never changed? Again, revert it back. If anything can be changed, wouldn't there always be a way to change it to something else? Although it would never return to the state it was, if you take water and freeze it and thaw it, is it the same water? Does it contain the same space? Has it lost or gained anything along the journey? That was the answer I was looking for. Thank you. I only answer the questions I am asked. Shall we? I have no questions. Yes, let's go. Yes. Very well. I'll, uh, I'll go to, over to our host and uh, tap her on the shoulder. The stones move back. The ground turns back to its bluish haze and the altar closes. Mm. So you know where you need to go to get that which you seek now. More or less. What? Yes and no. We appreciate your assistance. I only do what is I am called to do as a member of the wood. Thank you. The tea was great. I don't know what you made it with, but it's fantastic. Wonderful. It's not poisoned at all. I will report back on that. So it sounds to me as though, well, the I said that the center of all this is Tavi. Our original Tavi? plan, yes. Oh, it does not matter. It's not my business. We should find a city and resupply before we continue. We are yes. woefully underprepared. And underarmed, yes. Hmm. Agreed. And you're going yes. to Weapons destroy us. You're going to destroy it, right? Yes. When the opportunity comes, we must. We'll find a way. I would not tarry too long with it in case it finds you. Understood. We will take yes. care. May you lead us back, and we can make our leave? Of course. Thank you. And she will guide you back to her home and set you on the path back out. 
Be mindful not to harm any of the creatures as you go, please. Of course not. Um, pinecone. Pinecone. We still have the pinecone? We still have the pinecone. Right. And we're off. Before, as you guys are leaving, <clears throat> she will place a hand on Ptolemaeus's arm to have him hang back a moment. Okay. And she will look into your eyes. And for a moment, you're going to get a different visage of her. Instead of the old, stooped over woman that you have seen, you see a very, not, you know, fabulously Hollywood beautiful woman, but you see a very attractive blonde standing in front of you, and over her shoulders, kind of faded in the background, you see a brunette and a redhead. They almost look the same. There are very features that are a bit different. When you see him, tell him we're waiting. Understood. And as with that, you are out of the house and into the Ravenswood, waking your, making your way back, I guess, towards Krimnos, because that's the path you would know. But you're welcome to find any other path out of the woods you would like to. But yeah, I, I like the wagon, so uh, let's, let's get back. <laughs> but I think <laughs> that's something we'll Prime's have to still there. Next time. Yeah. Back to Prime.